Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel, and this is Scott. Today, I want to talk about LexD's built-in graphical user interface. So LexD has a powerful CLI and API, but up until now, it really has not had its own built-in GUI. So I've covered LexD UI, LexD Mosaic, and LexD Dashboard. So these are all third-party GUI dashboards, and out of all of them, I prefer LexD Dashboard by LexDWare the most. So in the end of 2023, Canonical announced early access to their own built-in LexD graphical user interface. The LexD Web UI, as it's called, is available as a part of the LexD Snap package beginning in LexD version 5.14. So we're going to learn how to configure the LexD Web UI in this tutorial. So the LexD Web UI has been out for a couple of months but I was really waiting until this thing became production because I didn't really want to do a video on it until it actually became something that you could use without having to load uh, the edge version or beta version of the product. So the first thing you want to do on your LexD server is go in and do a LexC dash dash version. And you notice that mine is running 5.15 Beginning in 5.14, this thing was production. If you're running an older version of the LexD server, you want to go ahead and upgrade it, and it won't affect any of your containers that you have loaded on your system, but the command would be sudo snap refresh lexd space dash dash channel equals latest. And when we do that, it will go off and refresh that channel. And at that point in time, you should be running the latest version. You can come out and do a Lexi dash dash version. So at the point in time when I'm recording this, 5.15 is the latest version. And as I mentioned, 5.14 is when the Lexi graphical UI was first available. In order to enable the interface, the first thing we have to do is a sudo snap set lexd space ui dot enable equals to true. After we do that command, the next thing we're going to need to do is to restart lexd. And the way we're going to do that is a sudo snap restart space dash dash reload LexD. Another way to reload the LexD daemon would be with a sudo snap ctl reload snap dot LexD dot daemon. But the restart command that we did here earlier is sufficient. So the other thing that we want to make sure of is we want to make sure that we have the uh, core address set correctly and that command was lexd config set space core dot https underbore our address colon 8443 and uh, you want to set that appropriately. As a review in the lexd step-by-step -step video during the sudo lexd init that we performed when originally setting up lexd, we answered one of the questions in regards to would you like to have the lexd server available over the network? The answer to this in our setup was yes, and it still needs to be yes in order for this to work. And then secondly, it asks you what port you want to bind LexD to, and by default, it's going to be port 8443, and we're going to make the assumption that that's the port that you're using in this video as well. In your web browser, preferably the Chrome browser, you want to go ahead and navigate over to the address of your LexD server, followed by a colon, 
and then port 8443 as we mentioned previously. When you do that, you're going to get a your connection is not private. Go ahead and click advanced and say proceed. At this point in time, you should get this screen, which is the canonical LexD web GUI. We want to select create a new certificate and then it says you have the option to generate a certificate. We'll go ahead and generate that certificate and I don't feel like I really need a password so I'm going to go ahead and say skip and then we want to download that certificate and now that we've downloaded it it's in my download directory. Now that I've downloaded the certificate I want to go ahead and make a copy of this particular command. We'll go ahead and minimize, go back to our terminal and paste this in and that goes ahead and loads that trusted certificate to the certificate store in LexD. Since I use LexDware LexD dashboard I already have a number of certificates added to the trust store and so I can do the command at any point in time LexC config trust list and it will give me the certificates that I have added out here. In this particular case, you can see that I have one loaded for LexDware, and I also now have one loaded for the LexD UI. Since I'm using the Chrome browser, I want to go ahead and click on Chrome Linux over here, and then I'm going to click the download PFX file. Now that I've downloaded that PFX file, it says that we want to go over to the Chrome certificates and click the import button. So we go ahead and open another tab. We go over here to that Chrome certificates area. We say import and then we go to my downloads directory and I have that uh, PFX certificate which happens to be the number one certificate here because I accidentally downloaded the Firefox one first. I'm going to do a select. It has no certificate password, so I go ahead and click OK and it imports that certificate. Now that the certificate is imported into the web browser, you can go back to the GUI for the LexD web UI. And at this point, you might have a pop up screen that you have to dismiss, but once you dismiss that screen, then you should have a list of your instances if you have any. In my particular case, I have two LexD VMs. One is Ubuntu VM and the other is Win 11 VM. Now let's go off and create an instance. We click on the Create Instance option. We can type in the name of the instance. Let's suppose I have the instance name as Test. And then you can optionally enter a description as well, which we're not going to do in this particular case. The next thing is it will ask you what the base image for the container that you're creating will be. We can click on Browse Images and up here we have an option for distribution. By default it lists Ubuntu first since Canonical builds Ubuntu, but you can click on Distribution and you can click on any other distribution you want here and there's really an extensive list of images to build containers under different Linux distros. So let's go ahead and select the Ubuntu Jammy, which is Ubuntu 2204. And then we have an option to select whether or not our container is going to be a container or a LexDVM. We also have an option for profiles. You'll recall from LexD dashboard that you could specify the default profile when the container was created, but you would have to come back to the container after it was created to add additional profiles. With the LexD Web UI by Canonical, we could simply say add profile and we could add our bridge profile. And so from the start, we'll have our container created with the default profile and the bridge profile. And then you have an option to either create the container or create and start the container. So we'll choose create and start, which returns you back to the instances screen. And here in just a minute, you'll see that the container name test comes up. It's not a VM. It is a LexD container. And it says that it is running. 
If we go ahead and click on this container, we are brought to an overview screen which describes a number of things about the container, namely what the base image is, Ubuntu 22.04 LTS. It says its type is a container. Eventually, it'll list the IPv4 address once the container is fully up and running. It also uh, will list the memory and the disk space used, as well as the um, network interface information and the profiles that we just set. You can go under the configuration screen and there's a number of configuration options you can change. And if you go down to the lower right and click edit instance, it will go into the edit mode. And so we can go down to things like storage and we could change storage pools if we had more than one storage pool. We can go down to network where we can make modifications to the network or we can go down to resource limits. Under resource limits, I could check exposed CPUs and I can say that at most I want this machine to have or this container to have two virtual CPUs. Likewise, under memory, if I put a check in the memory box, I can say that I want a certain percentage of CPU to be used or certain percentage of the CPU's memory, the host memory, the LexD host memory to be used for this particular container. Or I can simply click fixed and I can say something like, I want this container to have say 512 megabytes of memory. Once you're finished making all of your changes, you can go down here and click save changes. They also have options under things like security policies and snapshots and so on down the line. The snapshot screen will let you go ahead and create a snapshot of this container and the terminal screen will bring up the terminal logged in so you can go off and create an account on this system or perform updates or software installations. The console screen shows you the console and you'll have the console messages if you hit enter, it gives you an option to log in if you previously created an account. And the logs tab goes off and shows you the logs from having created the container. If we now come over to the left margin and return to the instances menu, you'll see that the container has gotten an IPv4 address and it is listed here. Let's go off and start our Ubuntu VM and it's a LexD VM so I can hit the start button here. We can go in and look at the Ubuntu VM. Again it has the configuration information, the disk space used, the configuration tab, the snapshots tab, and now the terminal tab which is the same as the terminal tab on the other but here's where this really differs from LexD dashboard. When we click on the console option, we have a choice of the graphical console that you can see here, which is the graphical GUI of my Ubuntu desktop. And I can click on it and interact with it like I would with any graphical desktop. Or I can click on the text console, in which case it gives me an option to log in and go off and perform functions there. So the difference is, is that LexD dashboard only has the textual console versus the canonical uh, web UI provides the ability to have the graphical console built in. You'll also note that this graphical console is really full featured because I can click the full screen option here and it will go ahead and bring up a full screen display of my GUI console, which is actually very nice. And I can bump against the top of the screen, hit the X here, and it will go ahead and exit back to the windowed version of the interface. Returning now back to the instances screen, again, we see that where Ubuntu VM is up and running and that it has an address 
and we can see that our test container is up and running and it has an address. Also on the menu, we have the profiles section, which will let you go off and look at particular profiles. So for example, I could click on my bridge profile and it will give you a little bit of a description here on what it is. And you can click on configuration and it will describe things about that particular profile. And we can go off and even edit the profile to make changes to it. So if I say edit profile and go down to storage, we have what we'd expect. This profile is used for networking. And so in this particular case, it is using device ETH0 and you can specify resource limits and all sorts of other things as this profile can be configured. So I'll go ahead and do a cancel out of that since I don't want to make any changes. We can also go to networks and we can see all the network devices this particular host has. You notice that here's my Bridge Zero device that I talk about on the channel in the LexD step-by-step -step video. Here I have the storage pools and it gives me my storage pool utilization. At the time I created the storage pool on this particular host, my default storage pool was using ZFS, which I always identify as a best practice. And it's using about 43 gigabytes of 144 gigabytes, which was the size that I specified when I created it. Operations simply shows you any operations that are pending, like uh, backups or snapshots. And configuration shows you the global configuration settings that you have for the entire LexD server. I'm not going to get into clustering because clustering is uh, out of scope for this particular presentation. You can go down to warnings and it will give you information about any warnings that you have seen on the server. And you can go into settings and the settings let you change all sorts of things that are associated with the server. They also have a documentation section which will pop up the documentation which tells you that LexD is now under canonical and it describes some changes to how LexD will be supported. Uh, it also has a discussion section if we click on it it will go ahead and go into the discuss.linuxcontainers.org, which is the uh, group um, communication on all things LexD. So all in all, and at the very bottom, it has a report a bug option. And it also says that my LexD server is 5.15. And as I pointed out earlier, uh, this product, this GUI product begins support in version 5.14 so since I'm running 5.15 that's how we get this here and overall I'm really pleased with this product um, there doesn't seem to be a way to go off and manage other LexD servers on this as of yet but they're making changes on it all the time and it's a good option especially for people that want a first party solution for their GUI interface as opposed to going off to something like LexD dashboard, which at this point I still prefer. So in summary, the LexD web UI is a first party graphical user interface developed by Canonical and built into the LexD snap package. Once you enable the web interface, you can generate a certificate and add it to the trust store on your LexD server in order to use it. This is a great basic interface for LexD container management. The project is located at this URL and you can go out and read the documentation. Look for this interface to expand and improve in each new release version of LexD. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time.